So today we are discussing progress monitoring in the IEP, again, presented by ARC of NEPA Advocacy Department, which includes myself, Roseanne Polition, uh, Mandy Colville, and Katie Foley. And we are all three advocates here, and we are also parents of individuals with intellectual and developmental disability. So our first slide today is what is progress monitoring? Uh, progress monitoring is the ongoing process of collecting and analyzing the data to determine a student's progress towards attainment of educational goals. And in today's presentation, we're, refused, we're referring to the progress monitoring um, as determining progress on the IEP, the Individualized Education Programs Goals for students who receive special education services. So progress monitoring in this term for today refers to the IEP goals. Um, it is how progress towards meeting goals will be measured because um, they must be measurable goals. Uh, they must be, you know, the progress monitoring has to ensure that there's accuracy and that they meet timelines and they cover all the goals in the IEP, whether they be academic, functional, behavioral, transitional goals, or re goals related to different related services, such as speech, occupational therapy, vision, hearing impaired, or any other type of uh, related service that has goals. Uh, these, these progress monitoring reports should detail the progress uh, that is gonna be provided. It's gonna be at least quarterly with the report card. And uh, we'll get into some more details on these topics in the further slides. And one last thing to remember is that it's showing what needs to be done for the student to achieve the goals. So it should detail what needs to happen for the student to make progress against their goals. So under IDEA, uh, there is information on progress monitoring. Uh, the Individuals with Disab Disabilities Education Act is what IDEA stands for, and it's the federal regulations. So we pulled this right out of uh, IDEA that uh, three in section 300.320, it says that a description of how the child's progress toward meeting the annual goals described in the paragraph above two which is the goal section, will be measured, and when periodic reports on the progress the child is making toward meeting the annual goals, such as through the use of a quarterly or other periodic report concurrent with the issuance of report cards will be provided. So under IDEA, it tells you those two areas to really take out and remember is the how and the when. So the next slide talks about why is progress monitoring important? Uh, and sometimes, you know, you have your IEP meetings and life gets busy and you kind of forget, you know, oh, I didn't get the progress monitoring or I didn't get a chance to look at it. But, you know, it's very important to make sure you're getting it in that timely manner and that you're reviewing it for accuracy and to see what's going on. And that progress monitoring is really important because it informs the parents. And here, us as advocates, we always stress that a parent is the equal member of the IEP team and you know your child best. And this is how you get informed of your students' progress, how they are doing, um, keeping the family involved and what changes might need to happen in the educational environment. And to remind you that you are part of the IEP team and deserve to have that information uh, according to the regulations. Progress monitoring is also important because it gives details on whether goals are being met or they're not being met. And if not, what can we do to change that? There could be a number of things which we'll get into on the fur further slide in terms of maybe increasing supports, changing the measuring tools, adding in additional time spent in that area to work on a goal. Uh, evidence also is important that the IEP is working. Goals are based on academic standards. Uh, you know, the PA core standards developed for math and English language arts uh, in the state of Pennsylvania is, is connecting what students must know and how they are to demonstrate that to the curriculum, how all they are taught that. Um, and if you're going to be using a certain the state standards curriculum or alternatives type of curriculum uh, should be addressed as part of this process. Um, so you may see sometimes in the goal section, uh, a related standard listed below the goal. So that's how it's correlating the goal to the actual standard. And also it's important because you're monitoring and you want to stay ahead of any concerns. So you don't want any surprises. You don't want to wait all year long and then the third quarter comes along and you find out that the child hasn't made any progress uh, in one area. Um, you don't want to wait to the last minute for that. Okay, so the next slide we get into 
going back to our previous presentation we had in the section on goals. Uh, so when you talk about process, progress monitoring, we're going to take a step back to look at the goals because that's really what's being monitored. So uh, remember that, you know, goals should be smart. Um, and usually this is kind of widely available out there. Specific, measurable, attainable. Uh, I've all, we have listed here results oriented. Sometimes you'll see relevant, but they're both kind of hand in hand. Um, and time based time bound. So they should be in a timely manner and end at a certain time or be results. Results will be accomplished by this date. Um, there, the IEP goals are designed to be met within that yearly IEP. It shouldn't be the same goal year after year after year. So with the progress monitoring, we're going to want to see if they are on target to reach this goal. Possibly they haven't started this goal. There may be other goals that they've been concentrating on and you know it becomes apparent from the progress monitoring that we haven't even looked at this goal. Maybe we need to look at it. Maybe we need to take some more time in this area. If supports need to be increased, you could get this information from the progress monitoring of the goal if they're not making progress or progress has kind of become stagnant. And if a goal is met, uh, you can add a new goal. You don't have to wait till the next IEP cycle so it's important to see, oh, we're flying through these goals uh, where we're going to assess the student and see where they're at so they can we can add a new goal. And short-term objectives can be added to any student's goal. So it's just you want to remember that. Uh, they are required for students taking the Pennsylvania Alternative Assessment. They have to have a short-term objective. But if they're not, if they're not taking the pass, well, they can still maybe need a short-term goal that the team might agree on, such as, you know, they're having an emerging skill. You want to track it more closely, a broad goal that you want to break down into smaller benchmarks, how and when, where it may still be, how and when must still be covered though, remember in those, but excuse me, dog barking. <laughs> um, okay, then we're going to get to the next slide. Uh, continue with the goals in the IEP. Goals are where we are, what we are progress monitoring. Uh, so refer to that goal grid box on the IEP, and that will list how and when there may be the report of progress must be given. So that must be filled out on the IEP in the goal section. So when we talk a little bit about the how is how will progress be measured, and it must be listed. It has to be linked to daily instruction across all environments. It's not just uh, a one-time thing where we measure progress. Uh, objective measures must take, must take place. What will the student actually be doing? the specific action the student is expected to perform and also consider any prompting or assistance and include that. So it's gonna be prompting and then we're gonna fade the prompt uh, or mastery is not gonna be considered until they don't have a prompt. You wanna make sure that's listed. List of frequency, the number of times. Is that across days? Is that across occurrences? Uh, percentage of times, is that daily or weekly by the end of the IEP cycle? Uh, how often are they gonna be uh, measuring this progress, the frequency? And then the location, uh, is it in the English language arts class? Is it in the speech class room? Is it per situation particular or given material during the probes, weekly testings? You know, when we get, the, when we have this probe, they're gonna, um, that's when they're gonna get pulled out and that's the location uh, that's gonna take place. And by whom, is it gonna be the teacher or another staff member? And how well do they need to perform for mastery? Is it nine, like for example, 90% over five consecutive probes? Is it three correct times? Is it improved to the 30th percentile for the third grade oral reading fluency? It should be very specific um, about how the progress is to be measured. So that should be listed. When will be reported uh, and must be listed as well. So now we're gonna get into the when, that how and that now the when. So when progress can also, uh, it needs to be reported and it must be listed. It could also sometimes be also added into the SDI. If, if you're changing just for this one child for a little while that you're gonna have increased progress monitoring, say monthly, or the parent's gonna be re requesting the data sheets that go along with the progress monitoring. That kind of information could be listed in the SDI section as well as next to the goal. Uh, possible methods. So there's a lot of different ways to collect uh, the progress monitoring. Um, sometimes you will see a duplicate goal section from the original IEP. So the original IEP lists the goal, 
um, and all the details. And in that last box, maybe blank. Um, but at, when you get your progress monitor, you're going to get a copy of that sheet and that information will be filled in. So some schools will do it that way. Uh, and sometimes they will also list a baseline where the student's currently at as a reference point, which is I find to be very helpful. So if they're measuring, you know, the correct number of correct letters that the child's able to identify, their baseline is 10, then you have the quarter one progress, you see they've increased to 25, or it might say, even get into specifics like, uh, you know, say example, they're mastering sight words. Here's the 10 sight words they know, quarter one has ended, now they know 25 sight words, here are those new sight words. So baselines could be added into that section. And then sometimes there's a separate tool, uh, a progress monitoring printouts of each goal, and details of the probes, the assessments, the measurements that were used. And it complete, uh, de depending on the IEP writer system or the tools that your school district's using, you may see different types of methods um, about you know, when and how the information will be communicated to. And don't be afraid to ask any questions or ask for clarification uh, on those tools and how it's gonna be reported. And then of course you can ask for a conference or meetings to discuss on the phone, or in person, the progress monitoring, how things are going. Uh, and other options that are agreed upon, um, like I said before, monthly, getting copies of data, getting behavior tracking sheets, especially if it's a new goal or a new concern, you might, might wanna ramp up the how and when. So next slide talks about the tools that may be used to measure progress. And these, there's really an unlimited amount of tools that can be used, but we really wanna make sure they're very objective. Uh, not just observations that are subjective and can uh, be influenced by personalities, uh, time, uh, efforts put in by the individual. Um, we want to make sure they're very specific uh, measurements. Um, so first we'll say benchmarks. They're what the child will do by this date. Um, so for example, give an example, order, order reading or oral reading fluency. <laughs> um, you may be measured using uh, Ames Web or another benchmarking tool. So it's, you know, doing the probes off of, over consecutive amounts of time and the computer generates uh, their progress based on the benchmarks that were set and the tool that's used uh, to come out with the input. So that's very a very standardized type um, program that might be used. Uh, when I mentioned before, observations of teachers and staff, it should not be subjective and it should be very detailed, maybe using checklists or some predetermined method of collecting the data. Uh, formal and informal assessments. So there may be standardized testing, actual reevaluation testings, um, tests uh, that that are created just to use for the measurement of the goal. Uh, probes. Uh, you know, there are a lot of kids get that. That's referred to in IEPs. They will probe them in this certain area for reading, for math, for written expression, and they will check things uh, every so often. And they have to get it so many times in that amount of time that's listed in IEP. So, you know, three consecutive times and they um, reach 90% over those three consecutive times and the year, and then they've reached the goal. Uh, checklists, there's all kinds of different checklists you could use, rating scales, personal tracking tools. I even said students that do their own tracking of uh, progress monitoring in certain areas. If they have a social goal or um, independent goal, uh, to navigate in the building or to keep their stuff organized. They may have their own little tracking tool, tool that they use or in checklist. Um, assignments, tests and quizzes that are created by the teacher can help uh, help progress monitoring um, and certain rubrics where information and grades will be broken down and explained uh, how they come up with these grades in the system. And it's just basically breaking everything down and letting you know where something uh, might be missing. And the curriculum-based uh, measurement um, tools based on that specific curriculum that's being used, that may, if you're using Wilson's reading program or uh, some other type of you know, curriculum, they may have certain measurements built in and that they will be using those to possibly aid in the uh, progress monitoring. And then uh, another one would be behavior tracking. So an ABC chart or some kind of data tracking chart, chart if your uh, individual student has uh, goals in those areas of behavior or maybe like emotional regulation or something uh, to that effect. And then our next slide, we're gonna get into who can and is responsible for progress monitoring. 
So data can be collected or monitored by many people and across many locations. So it's not necessarily just the job of your case manager, or your special education teacher to monitor the goals. Yes, they are responsible for compiling it and providing it to the parent in the agreed upon time frame, but that data can really be collected at different places and by different folks. So, you know, it could be if the child, uh, the student is out uh, doing a job as part of their school day, the job coach may be collecting the data. Uh, an outside provider may be uh, collecting that data if you're, they're in a community-based instruction program or a transition program, or they're going to some kind of a counselor at the school and meeting with them. That counselor could be providing the, the data. Uh, and even a student themselves can, like I mentioned before, can be collecting data themselves uh, to help assist with the progress monitoring, um, especially in terms of um, organizational or social goals. Um, independent living type goals, even when you're looking at self-advocacy, coping skills, things like that. Uh, and they can be collected. It's not just you have to be in the school environment in that classroom to be a progress monitor on your goals. It can take place in classrooms, throughout the building, and community-based instructions. If you go to CTC, their career technology, if you're doing after-school extracurricular activities, uh, related services, obviously, they're doing some prog progress monitoring. If you're going to speech therapy, um, and outside provider programs and counselors and so forth. So, you know, there's a really a broad range and you want to really talk about with that with your IEP team if you have um, a little bit different, especially as students get older, a little bit different way of looking at things. And if your child's moving maybe at, after 12th grade uh, into more like a transition age. Okay, and uh, now we're going to talk about what to do if the student is not making progress. So what to do if if you're not seeing any progress um, with your students' goals, or maybe with just some of them, um, talk to the teacher first off. Talk to your IEP case manager, your special ed teacher, and try to figure out the reasons why. Um, and nothing should come as a surprise, so you wanna keep that communication, lines of communications open uh, throughout the school year. But if you do have those um, persistent, you know, ongoing issues where the goals are, a, a goal maybe is not being met, you're gonna really need to make some adjustments. So some of those adjustments may include some of the following, and that is this is not an extensive list, but just to give you some additional ideas that what could be done. Uh, more instructional time might be needed. Do they need to be pulled out? Maybe they were having a push-in scenario in the general education classroom, but that's not enough. Maybe they need to be pulled out and get a more like smaller group or some more one-on-one -on -one, um, or a resource room where they can really get um, you know, honed in on what the actual issue is going on. So that um, that's something to discuss. Uh, more intensive methods are required, or maybe you know, additional curriculum adjustment has to be made. This curriculum's not effective. Uh, we need to spend a little more time uh, working uh, individually with the child, or like I said before, in a small group, or adjusting uh, the curriculum or the testing methods maybe um, that are being done and make it a little more intensive. Uh, zero in on that area that needs the most support. So if they're in a class and they're, um, like for example, like an English class and their writing is maybe really the struggle um, where they need the most support, what kind of assistive technology, accommodations, different things we can, we can add to the IEP that can help zero in in that area that needs the most support. Um, are they making huge gains in one area over the other? So sometimes you may see that. Uh, students really, you know, emerging, you know, child with autism is really emerging on their social skills or their communication skills, but then the academics are kind of stagnant. Uh, why, you know, are they making a huge gain in that area? So it's kind of leveled off in the other area. It doesn't mean we don't give up on it or don't work on it, but it might explain why. Um, you know, tasks need to be broken down further. Do they, are they missing that prerequisite skill? Um, sometimes this occurs maybe sometimes in the way the material is being presented. So the student doesn't really understand the presentation of the material, um, and that may impact their progress. So, if, for example, their, you know, their goal is to re-identify uh, all the letters uh, in the alphabet, but they're just struggling and they can't make any progress. Let's take a step back and see: Are we pairing the letter with the sound, or repairing the letter with a word that may me make sense and will help trigger that memory of the letter uh, in the child's brain? So, you, sometimes you have to take a step down, break things down a little bit further or see where the previous skill maybe is missing that they needed before they could do multiplication and addition. You know, they have to understand the concept of numbers and the counting. 
Um, so it, you, there's just like a little bit more that you need to maybe take a step back and look a little bit further with the team and your and your IEP team and your teachers to look at that. Um, increase the frequency and repetition. So do they need to review this goal a little more often? Instead of getting pulled out for you know, weekly probes, do we have to make it twice a week? Or instead of monthly, do we have to break, um, have this a little more often? Or do we need to have them repeat, repeat the, the words or the sounds uh, to get them to kind of not even memorize, but get their brain, the motor planning going where they understand and they get their brain trained that way. So there's just a different, depends on the student, depends on their needs, it's gonna depend on their goals. But the point is that there's also, there's always some adjustments and things that can be done. Uh, again, like we mentioned before, add benchmarks. If they, you want to adjust the goal, uh, maybe add, increase the monitoring and add, add some benchmarks, adjust a little, tweak the goal just a little bit and, and look at things a little bit closer and a little more often. And then if need be, you might have to have some further formal evaluations, more comprehensive testing and independent educational evaluation. Um, many things can be done and may be needed, but you know, first take the, you know, the smaller steps first and see where you're at. Um, but keeping those lines of communication open is key. Um, you know, a lot can be resolved when you get people together in person or, you know, on a Zoom where you guys can talk things through and figure out, you know, where the disconnect is. Um, so that's basically taking through us through this uh, progress monitoring. Again, uh, I know the sessions are quick. They share a lot of information. We hope you can refer to them in the future. And um, I hope you got a little bit of something out of this today. I thank you for attending um, or participating. If you have any questions, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the um, recording and then we could discuss anything that you'd like if if it's anything personal or you want to share something. Um, and uh, here is our contact information at the Arc of NEPA, myself, Mandy, or Katie. And if you could reach out to one of us, we certainly will try to help you. And we appreciate you attending today. Um, thank you very much. Let me get the recording.